Hey everyone, Michael Bodner here with Tune in Tesla, episode two on Tesla Tunity. On tonight's episode, Elon tweets again and again and again once more. A few nights ago, Elon was going through one of his typical tweet storms. Um, you know, a lot of people were able to ask questions and get answers, uh, mostly cryptic answers. But one Twitter user, James Patton, asked the, uh, the $20 million question. He asked him how he felt about the tweet that cost him $20 million. Elon's two-word answer, worth it. Typical, typical, typical Elon answer. Um, you know, love him, but sometimes you'd hope that he'd keep to the positive things on Twitter and, and not kind of poke at the SEC, not poke at the judgment, um, call it possibly harmless fun. But, uh, you know, that was tweet number one that I want to highlight this week. And tweet number two came in response to Fred from Electric, who uh, called Elon out on Twitter after the Model 3 performance with performance upgrade package was dropped by $5,000 uh, for all new orders going forward. Fred had some choice words for uh, Elon and Tesla at that change, and um, Elon responded back saying, you know what, you could have the $5,000 back, or you could keep lifetime supercharging. Now, my personal take on this, uh, I don't believe lifetime supercharging is worth anything close to $5,000. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. It depends exactly on your mileage. How far are you driving? How often are you on road trips? How often are you supercharging? But uh, uh, more important than the point of $5,000 or supercharging, this is one where I think, you know, if Elon wouldn't uh, be as active on Twitter, this one costs the company money. Um, you know, I know it's all about doing what's right for the customer, but uh, in this case, the customer signed a motor vehicle purchase agreement, took delivery of the car, and it went on sale for new customers going forward. I don't believe in my heart that Tesla owes customers anything in that case after delivering a vehicle. It's uh, it's much like consumer electronics these days. You buy a TV, you find out it goes on sale later. Uh, of course, some stores have deals where if it goes on sale within 30 days, you can get a get a discount or get the credit back. But in this case, a motor vehicle purchase. You know, imagine you bought a BMW M3, and the dealership offered a fire sale, a clearance sale the next weekend. All M3 is five thousand dollars off sticker price. Do you think you would get that money back from BMW uh, or from a dealership? Very unlikely. Uh, so in this case, you know, I know Tesla's all about doing what's right, but uh, this one I thought probably could have just been left alone. Uh, no response or, or a different response could have, could have worked in this case. And finally, wrapping up my Elon tweets of the week, uh, we have this great tweet where Elon announces he is now the nothing of Tesla. And basically what he means by that cryptic message is that if you look on Tesla's website and you go into the corporate section under investor relations, you will actually find that uh, his title is completely removed. In fact, the other executive titles are removed as well and you just see their bio. So again, another cryptic uh, slight jab at the SEC. Is it all in good fun? Sure. I don't know if it's necessary, but uh, in any event, Elon having fun, he's back on Twitter. And as long as we keep it positive and keep it going forward, hopefully everything will be all right with his, uh, with his Twitter usage. All right, the next Tesla story I'd like to bring to your attention is Navigate on Autopilot. The rollout has begun for U.S. consumers. Uh, I believe Canada should be next and hopefully Europe not too far out from there. I actually received this update last night, so I was able to drive with it this morning. My quick one-line takeaway after my first initial drive was... Navigate on autopilot is pure magic. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but I'll try my best. Uh, if you're not aware of what comes with this feature, you're able to now have the car exit on its own on the highway, which uh, is a little scary at first, uh, but the car will actually put on the turn signal and it will take the exit for you. You'll see a little warning message that says autopilot's about to end and it'll give you a, a kind of a countdown for how many feet to go. I do have a, a short clip of it playing in the background here so you can see what it's like. I apologize if it's a little shaky, um, but you can kind of get a feel for it. In addition, some of the other great features that come with Navigate on Autopilot is the ability to make a decision at a fork in the road. So, um, you know, if you're at a highway exchange and one highway is to the left, one is to the right, based on the navigation, the car is able to make the correct decision and take you um, to the right highway through that exchange. 
It will also make recommendations. So if you're in the far left lane, but you need to get over to the right, the car will actually make the suggestion. All you do is acknowledge that you'd like to uh, make the change that the car is recommending. You could do that with the gear lever or with the turn signal. Um, so if you make either, uh, either approval, the car will follow suit. Of course, checking the blind spot. So just because the uh, car says we need to get over, it won't just go. So we'll of course use the 360 view and um, monitor your blind spot and go ahead and make that lane change for you. And then last but not least, uh, one of my favorite parts of this, and, and I'm going all out, I'm in Mad Max mode, and that is that the car is now paying attention to your surroundings. If you've fallen below the speed that you'd like to have autopilot travel for you, it will actually make the recommendation to take the lane next to you if that lane's traveling faster. Of course, there are three levels as well as uh, Mad Max mode, you have two lower levels. Um, none of those levels are unsafe, or I should say none are more safe than the other. What it is is the extreme levels of how frequently would you like the car to recommend a lane change for you, Mad Max being the most aggressive. Um, I found in my drive today that Mad Max did really well. Um, it was not you know, too much. One thing that I did find, and again, this is kind of day one of a brand new feature, uh, but when I hit bumper to bumper traffic, navigate on autopilot struggled. When it came time to, to merge the car, uh, more or less just decided it's, we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop and wait for the opening. Uh, previous versions of autopilot before navigate on autopilot, it would continue to kind of make its way, make its way, make its way. And um, I should say fairly safely make that merge. So the merge is still safe but the car seems to come to a stop in bumper to bumper traffic. So I'm sure that's something we'll see an improvement on, um, but really impressive functionality nonetheless. Um, when you get this functionality and, and you feel it for yourself, you could really see that this is where full self-driving is going. In fact, as I use this functionality, I'm almost shocked that this is not full self-driving functionality. I'm, I'm very curious to see what will be the first set of full self-driving functionality that we'll see, uh, which we do know will roll out at some point here with the V9 um, upgrades down the road. But for now, navigate on autopilot, pure, pure, pure magic. Um, if you have autopilot and you don't have the update yet, it's uh, version 2018.42.2 or higher. Um, once you get one of those updates, you will in fact have navigate on autopilot. If you don't, and if you do have autopilot in your vehicle, um, it could be that your car needs a map update. So watch out for that. I saw a few tweets, people who had the upgrade, had autopilot, and did not get navigated on autopilot. So watch out for that. In addition, while, while on the topic of 42.2, uh, Tesla has released the ability to pair keys to the car, physical keys, just like the Model S and the Model X get. Um, we don't yet know how to get them. I did see a report, not substantiated yet, that uh, it was on the Model 3 Owners Club on the forum, so I don't wanna spread bad news, but I did see a tweet, someone mentioned a service center indicated that the keys are not available yet, but they will be available for $268 US. Again, that's one person reporting on a, on a service center's uh, feedback, so let's wait and see. We'll circle back and see what the keys go for. Uh, for me personally, I don't, I don't uh, feel the need to get the key. I'm very happy with the phone and the card is the extreme backup. Um, but for those who need the key, especially if you're in Canada, it's a requirement for utilizing the summon feature. Exciting news uh, at a price point of 268, if that is the correct price, certainly not unreasonable as compared to uh, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, their keys certainly go for a lot more than that. Um, so be on the lookout for those keys coming soon. And then last but not least included with the update is stronger regenerative braking. I was able to experience that on my drive today as well. A welcome uh, addition to the car. Uh, that would be my one knock on the Model 3 as compared to the Model S probably, is that the regen is a little bit weaker. This helps bring us uh, up to the Model S uh, near, I'd say near the Model S. It's not quite there yet with the level of regen you get on a Model S, but uh, a, lot, a lot easier to uh, control your slowing down um, without tapping the brake pedal at all. So great, great, great update. Um, we just got V9. Now we're getting the next wave of V9 features. All great things and uh, excited to see what comes next on this one. All right, next up, Tesla actually opens up the parts catalog. This one's been a long time in the making, um, especially all of you uh, do-it-yourselfers are for sure very excited about this. Um, it really 
points to independent shops being able to help us service our cars here very soon, um, if, if not already. So these are, this is a great sign, I think, a great step in the right direction. As I look through it, and you can kind of see it on the screen here behind me, um, I noticed a lot of the parts say, contact Tesla. So pricing isn't necessarily abundant in the parts catalog, but the ability to see how everything's put together really helpful um i myself am excited to see uh what comes of this one of the things that i'd like to find out is when we can get the model 3 performance pedals um i do have performance pedals on my car they're kind of calling the uh the ebay special uh they're kind of holding me over until the real deal come through um so i'm, I'm hoping that, that this uh, gets me there but obviously this is much bigger than uh model 3 performance pedals this is all of the parts that go into your car and it's available for Model S, Model X, Model 3, and the original Roadster. And in Model S, you'll see the uh, 2012 to 2016 version and then 2016 forward. So all of the cars in the lineup, all of the parts right at your fingertips. One note I'll give you that the site performs much better on a desktop uh, than a mobile phone. In fact, it's incredibly difficult to borderline impossible to use on a mobile phone. So if you're interested to check it out, um, as with everything else discussed, I'll have a link in the description and uh, you can go ahead and check it out. And again, just remember, try it out on your desktop. You probably won't be happy if you try it out on your mobile phone. All right, and finally, we'll close out tonight's show uh, with a report out of Electric stating that Tesla's urging customers to order now on the Model 3 mid-range if you'd like to still get the $7,500 US federal tax credit. Um, in the Electric article, they actually provide some dates or I should say some estimates on delivery. Those estimates are not in line with what I see on the Tesla site. So um, Electric may have some insider information, but what they're reporting is if you are able to take factory delivery at Fremont, you can get the car within four weeks. If you're on the West Coast, you can expect it at about four weeks. If you're somewhere in the central region, six weeks, and over where I am on the East Coast, eight weeks. So as I record this, happy Halloween, everyone, by the way. Eight weeks from today, we'll put you at the last day of the year, December 31st. So if you're looking to get a Model 3, and if you want, my opinion, the best deal going, the mid-range Model 3, 260 miles of range, I think that's right in the sweet spot. Uh, you know, better than the standard range, um, closer to the long range, uh, obviously dead set in the middle, um, but it gives you plenty of range, helpful on road trips, and kind of the best bang for your buck while still getting the $7,500 US federal tax credit. In addition, that car does qualify for six months of free supercharging. To get that, you'll have to use a referral code. You can use mine. Um, the link is down in the description below, or if you're entering it in or, or dealing with a salesperson in person, you can give them the code Michael34469, and that will allow you to get six months of free, unlimited, supercharging on the Model 3 mid-range. Now, if you're interested in another vehicle as well and you're still looking to get in for that federal tax credit, all Teslas in the lineup will qualify for six months of free supercharging. So if you're looking to get a Tesla, um, especially that mid-range vehicle at that perfect price point, um, now is the time to order, especially if you're on the East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, you might have a couple more weeks to play with, but I would recommend getting your orders in. Um, you know, at the end of Q3, we saw transit issues galore. Um, the cars were made. There was a struggle getting the cars to the customer. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't try to take delivery by December 31st. Um, but again, that is the cutoff. For anyone who's confused about how the tax credit works, even if you pay for the car in full, you will not get the tax credit if you take delivery in January. I should say you will not get the $7,500 portion of the tax credit if you take delivery in January. It is based on the date that the car is put into service. That is not the date that you take, or sorry, that is not the date that you pay for the vehicle. That is the date that you take delivery and uh, officially the car gets registered on that date. So be mindful of that. And um, hopefully for everyone, your Model 3 or any other Tesla is in the near future. You're able to take advantage of these great credits. Now, in the event you're not able to get your car by the end of the year and you move into January 1st, the credit will begin what's called the, the phase out period. So from January 1st to June 30th, you'll get 50% of the credit. It'll be down 50% uh, from 7,500. So you'll be at the 3,750 portion of the credit. And then as we move again further into next year, July 1st through the end of 2019, the credit will half again, going down to 1875, and then the credit will be gone beginning in 2020. 
Of course, all of that information starting January uh, 2019 and forward is all dependent upon you know, what could happen. Tax rules can change. Um, it could get better. It could get worse. It could completely go away. So if you're on the fence, if you're considering the Tesla, the time to buy is now. Make sure you get in before, on or before December 31st. So that's all I have for you today, this week in Tesla's news. Hope you enjoyed. And again, if you're interested in buying a Tesla, I'd really appreciate you using my referral code and uh, hopefully you can get the benefit of six months of free supercharging. Again, the code is Michael34469. And uh, good night, everyone. We'll see you next time.